Good morning, guys. Welcome back. Episode three. We had a very busy day yesterday. We had electricians in, we had plumbers in. We were here trying to get the rest of this place dialed in. It was a packed job site. And not only that, we're already on a tight job site. We made the best of it though. Plumbers are ready for their inspection. Electricians got what they needed to get in. They still have a little bit more to go. But after yesterday, they're now out of our way. We're able to continue on with what we're doing. We tied all the rebar up in the main building envelope. We still have the garage to take care of. They were working down there, so we stayed up top, tied all that bar. Now we're gonna focus on the bottom there of the garage, get that ready to pour. Ideally, two days from today, we have inspection. We have to get what they call a slab certificate. What this means is they're gonna come out and shoot our elevation to make sure that the slab is at the proper height. The reason for this is because if the slab isn't at the proper height, you have a chance at running into height limitations. And the last thing we wanna do is have our slab be way too high and then have to chop the top of the roof off for one of our clients. So a slab cert verifies that the slab is in the correct location all the way around the building. Then they give us the green light to pour, hoping to have that taken care of here in a day or two, and then it's on to pouring footings. But let's recap, check out what we got done yesterday, show you guys the progress, show you this jam-packed little build, and then we'll carry out with the rest of our day, get the front of this place formed up, we're gonna go over a couple things today, guys, such as spread footings, point loads, and more. Stay tuned. So we've got top bar, we've got bottom bar all the way around this place. What we're doing right now is just getting all the top bar out of the way pretty much to where we can do the bottom, get the bottom dialed and work the top. So by no means does this have to be perfect, just trying to get it out of the way. Then we'll work the bottom, get that dialed in all the way around the place, then come back and spread the top bar out. seven inches down from top of footing to the bar. That's how we're doing it. We've got this formed up all the way through the center here. We have a shear wall in here, so we're gonna be able to put our hold downs in here, all of our anchor bolts throughout here as well. We're gonna pour up to the bottom of the two by four. That'll leave us with that three and a half inches to do our finished floor over the top of it. You guys were saying that the lines that we had dug are, are trenching through the middle looked off centered. We have one center for our footing all the way through, and then we have one four foot off to the right of it. That's where the plumber's putting all their stuff right now. Underground guys just came in and put in the electrical sweep in the front right corner. We have a six inch stem wall and they put in a four and a half inch pipe. What I'm worried about is we have this narrow stem wall. We've got this massive pipe all the way down through the center of it. What's gonna happen is the concrete's gonna be so thin on both sides, it's just gonna crack. Everything's gonna fall out and that's exposed on both sides, inside and out. So we wanna make sure that comes out clean. We're gonna have six inches in between forms. Leaves us with about a half inch on both sides.
So you're gonna run that two by six from all the way under there mm -hmm. over to right here. I have that mark up top for you. That's where our 53 starts for our spread footing. We'll probably end up putting two across the bottom just to save on some concrete. Two by sixes. This side, it's... Same exact thing, so off of here, 53. Okay. So our spread footing right here is 53 by 33. So we'll come out to there cool. and that way. Awesome. That'll take care of it. But yeah, we'll put two two by six down there. That'll save us on concrete and look a lot cleaner on the front. Yeah. And then this will just pour out nice and flat. Sweet beans. We're gonna get the rest of this formed up. Start working on the side here. That side still, oh, he moved it. That sweep was in the wrong spot. Okay. Looks like he moved it over. So now we can form this side. We could form that side and get this yeah, wrapped up. That's in there. So we'll have trimmer, king stud, garage opening. Two and an eighth up, that one's set, that one's set. That's for our strong wall. Those are done.
a 2-6, yeah? Yeah, it's a 2 six, five, oh. As I've mentioned before, since we get to do the foundation and the framing, we get to think ahead quite a bit. We've ran into a lot of issues on foundations because people that are doing the foundation simply don't care about who follows. I wanna talk with you guys about a few things that we've already found that don't work out. These are things that would typically cause problems on a job site if you had different subs for every single trade. Since we're doing everything though, we get to watch it from day one and make sure that these things don't happen. I'm gonna explain a couple of those things right now to where you guys have an idea of what we've got going. If we weren't doing the framing and we really didn't care, we could pour this place and it would just be a problem for the framers. But we get to be proactive and think about these things ahead of time. So these dashed lines right here represent a shear wall. That three in a triangle represents a number three wall on the shear wall schedule. I'll throw the shear wall schedule up for you guys right now. We have a window here and we have a window there. I'll let you guys try to figure out the problem that we've got. I'm gonna put the little snippet of the plans up in the top corner. Look at it and tell me if you can see where we have an issue. I'll give you a hint though. This right here goes all the way up to the second story bathroom. Some of you guys may have got it, some of you didn't. We have two windows here. King studs right here, double trimmer right here, king stud over there. This right here goes right up to our window. I have a six by six here, hold down here, four by six king stud here. He needs to be right in here with his plumbing in order to make this work. We've got the foundation nearly prepped, all of our bar is tied. We have a cage in the front that needs to be completed, but other than that, we are done. Since that's prepped for pouring footings, what we did is went ahead and laid out every single window and door in this place, all the way across the back here, all the way down the sides, to where we could go through and make sure that no utilities are in the way. And then we can also prep for all of our hold downs and embeds. We have a hold down right here with a post here. This simply doesn't work. We have a shear wall going all the way along the backside. This needs to move over just a bit to where we can clear our hold down and our post. So honestly, they don't have a whole lot to do. This pipe needs to relocate over just a bit and the two along the back need to push back. Aside from that, everything came out awesome. These guys are super clean, super efficient. They were in and out in a day. The next and last thing I wanted to talk with you guys about today is what a spread footing is. Think about a post being right here, carrying the weight of the second story above. All of the weight from the second story is gonna be pushing right down here. And instead of having just a regular 15 inch wide footing, we need to have it beefed up. The way we do that is by having what they call a spread footing. It's called out on the plans. I'll put it right up over here to where you guys can see it. Each one is going to be different. We have one in the front that is massive for a strong wall going in. And then we have this one here, six by six post, same thing all the way across. So this specific spread footing right here is made to carry the six by six. They specced out 33 inches by 33 inches, 18 deep, which is what the rest of the footings are dug at. So we just had to open this one up here. I'll show you guys a drone shot in just a second tour. You can get an idea of what I'm talking about. The purpose of it though is to disperse the weight. Think about having a wall all the way on a stem wall. You've got the weight distributed all the way along that wall evenly. Now put a header across from one side to the other. You have a post on this side, you have a post on this side. Now, instead of having the wall all the way across to support that, you have a point load here and a point load here, meaning the weight is being carried at one section here and one over here. We have three posts in line here that are all gonna carry that second story. So instead of having a wall going all the way across where the weight is evenly distributed, we have three point loads all the way through here, which explains the spread footings. The best way to think of a spread footing or a point load is just a vertical support that's carrying quite a bit of weight. We still have a couple areas that rebar needs attention, such as the spread footing that I'm sitting in here. We'll have a mat down here at the bottom of the spread footing, bars running both ways, crossing over each other. We'll talk more on that tomorrow. Along with all of our embeds, I'll show you guys a few tips and tricks for those. Along with that, we're gonna go over a few things that most people miss. They're specced out on the plan, such as your three by three plate washers being within a half inch of your shear wall. We're gonna go over that and more tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying the videos so far. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bang on.